Hey everybody, welcome to the Blissful Stitch Podcast. My name is Christina. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today and spending a little bit of time with me as I chat about the things that I have been working on, the things that I have not been working on much, and a transition that will be coming uh, to my channel, my Instagram, and just my brand name in general. Um, but first and foremost, hello, it is August 1st, Saturday, August 1st, 2020. Uh, the last time I reported, I recorded a podcast was back in November or December of last year, or possibly January of this year. I'm not too sure. Uh, time has definitely taken its toll on me. But a lot has happened um, in my personal life, which I will not be getting into. But as 2020 has been for most of you, I'm sure it's been a rough, rough year so far. Um, personally, I've been going through peaks and valleys, uh, roller coasters. Um, and then with this whole COVID thing, just a new normal, as they say, when it comes to um, your home life, school life for your kids, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but I do have a few things that I would like to share with you guys, um, but I would love to know how you guys are doing. Um, just comment down below how you guys have been, how you guys have been handling this year. Has this year been a good year for you, a bad year for you? But I am excited uh, to sit here and just finally just talk to you guys um, about the things that I have um like I said, been working on, but at the same time, haven't been working on much. <laughs> uh, so just go ahead and grab your coffee or whatever beverage that you are having. It is fairly early. Um, it is 9.09 .09 right now. Um, again, Saturday, August 1st, 2020. Grab your beverage. Let's just sit and chat for a little while um, for my impromptu uh, podcast I'm doing impromptu because I actually tried to record this last night when it was really authentically impromptu but it was already late the sun was going the sun was pretty much down so the only light that I had was my lamp that's behind my camera and just the whole video was super super yellow and I was not digging it so I said let me just try again for the morning so that's why it is my quote-unquote impromptu podcast but let's go ahead and get started so first up i'm going to show you guys what is in my um handmade basket i got this from a home spot a homespun house um, last year, I believe, and it has been my favorite basket to put any type of my projects that I'm working on. So in here, I have two projects that this has been the majority of my um, knitting pretty much or crochet. Um, these two projects are the ones that I have been alternating back and forth. Sometimes it's weeks in between that I don't even touch it. Uh, the last time I touched any of these, I believe was like three weeks ago, <laughs> but I may actually do it today because I'm looking at it and I'm holding it and it makes me want to clink my fingers away. But anywho, let's go ahead and get into the contents of what's in here. Um, as many of you, I'm sure, um, you guys have joined uh, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady, her summer sock camp. When I first heard that she was doing a summer sock camp, I thought that was so cool, so unique, and so much fun. And as you can see, I was definitely on a roll, and I was doing really, really well, and then I just lost my mojo again. Uh, the mojo just has not been there, guys, for my creativity. <laughs> but I am actually doing the morning coffee socks. Morning coffee socks. That's her um, her uh, pattern that she had designed. So I chose to do that. I needed something a bit easy, a bit um, mindless to work on. I am all about the mindless work because my mind is just going 24-7 with unwanted thoughts, responsibility, and I just needed something mindless to work on. So I chose this um, pattern of hers to work on for the summer sock camp. I did pass the um, heel flap and gusset. I am now working on the foot. 
And actually yesterday when I first recorded the podcast, um, I had slipped some of these stitches. I had pulled a needle off and um, I rectified that this morning before coming back on here. But I am using the Knitter's Pride Zings, I believe, in 2.25, the DPNs. So I was in the DPN cabin and I'm just doing a, a two by two um, ribbed cuff. I believe the original pattern was for a twisted rib, rib cuff, but I decided to do the two by two, the twisted rib. I have to really be in the mood for that. Um, so I just did what was easiest. Again, mindless, easy. That's all that's all I'm about these days. Um, the yarn that I'm using, um, it was a collaboration actually with Allison from Lofty Loops, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady, and Signature Art Needles. Um, they did a collaboration together a few months back, and I believe this was the Succulents colorway um, from Lofty Loops Yarns. Beautiful. I didn't do the uh, Timeless Arrows pattern um, with this sock, uh, with this yarn, I should say, I really wanted to use this yarn, but then again, like I said, I really needed something mindless to work on, and the Timeless Arrows was just a little bit more of effort needing to concentrate on the pattern uh, for me. So, uh, morning coffee socks it was. But this is the yarn. Sorry, I have a really... <laughs> I guess cheapo as you call it um yarn winder so my balls my, or my cakes don't come out as pretty <laughs> but this is the colorway it's just beautiful it has a lot of purples and mint greens some peachy pink and cream it's just gorgeous this colorway is gorgeous so that is the sock that i have been picking up i know we always need a sock um so it's either between this or the next knit um, that I'm going to show you that I have just been kind of bouncing in between whenever the um, the craving for knitting hits. The next one that I'm working on is also a Crazy Sock Lady design and it is the Round and Round Cow. How beautiful is this? Isn't this coming out gorgeous? I love this so much. I'm using scrap yarns um, that I have. I actually have it together in this little pouch um, that I made quite a while ago. But this colorway, this light colorway at the top, is actually another Lofty, Lo Lofty Loops yarn in Christmas Cheer. I believe it was her um, Christmas colorway not this, not 2019, but for 2018, I believe. So this is Christmas cheer. This yarn here, forgive me, you guys, I don't know the colorway name, but I believe it's from Backyard Fiber Works. Forgive me if that is wrong. I'm sorry if you hear a bag crinkling. I have a bag next to me and my foot keeps touching it. But I am not sure of this colorway. I got this a couple of years ago at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival. And I have since lost um, the tag for it. And this colorway is Viva from Handmade Home Fibers, uh, Sorella's hand dyed yarn business. And I've just been alternating the colors. And I think it's coming out really, really cool. I would say I'm reaching for this a little more than I'm reaching for my sock because um, I just love the chevron pattern and um, the different colors that I'm working. So I am going from uh, this darker color to the Viva colorway, then back to the darker color, then going to the lighter uh, Christmas cheer color and kind of doing a pattern that way, um, putting this darker color in between alternating um, the two funner ones. <laughs> but this is how it looks. Just, just beautiful. And for this project, I am using uh, my 16 inch Chow Gu Red Lace in 3.75. I'm not sure if this is exactly the needle size that was called in the pattern, but I just chose to use it because it just fits the, um, the stitches perfectly on here. And I, don't believe I'm 
using like an overly big needle. I think it was off maybe by one size, probably. But anyhow, this is the Round and Round Cowl again by uh, Crazy Sock Lady Designs. So these two, like I said, have been living in this basket. And these are the two projects that are mindless enough for me that when I am in my creative mood, when it comes to um, knitting or crochet, I grab this basket and I just kind of knit away a few rounds at a time. I'm sorry if my voice sounds like a little froggy. Um, I am kind of I'm not just waking up, maybe I <laughs> woke up about 40 minutes ago, but um, I guess that calls for, for more coffee, right? <laughs> Okay, so the next projects that I'm going to show you are things that I literally haven't picked up in a couple months, but I did make progress on since the last time I showed a podcast or I recorded a podcast. Um, this one living in here in this uh, little bee uh, project bag that I had made uh, last year. I had this inside. I know I've shown this plenty of times on my podcast. But what's living in here is my Ripple Bralette. Now, I have made progress since the last time I showed you guys this. I am actually working on the I-cord strap for one of the sides. So I have gotten this far. It's very stretchy. I'm actually using a bigger needle than what the original pattern is called for. I think by maybe two sizes, I think. But here is the triangle. It does stretch, so hopefully it'll it'll fit my boob. <laughs> but it does stretch. It does have um, good way on here. And again, I'm just working on the I cord. I made a couple of mistakes. I don't know if you can tell, but for like this area and this area, I had gotten it a little bit thick and then I was able to rectify it here. I was not about to try, try to take that apart. It doesn't bother me much, um, but it's my first time doing I cord. So I'm like, let me just kind of go with the flow on here. The next strap will be better. <laughs> but this is as far as I have gotten um, on my Ripple Bralette, which is, I believe, significant progress um, since the last time I showed it. And the colorway that I'm using for this Ripple Bralette is from Sleepy Fox Yarns in the colorway um, Enchantress. I just love it. I've never had a, um, a yarn that is this in depth with like deeper foresty colors. I'm just in love with this. It's beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, as well, um, I'm not sure why this isn't finished yet because this was something that I was really, really enjoying knitting on. But it was like the moment that I put it down and didn't pick it up for a week, I lost the mojo for this project. And I just haven't picked it up, sadly, in I would say about three months now, sadly. But it's beautiful. And it will get done, hopefully by the end of this year, because I don't have a lot to go. I just have to finish that I cord strap, and then I have to work on the other triangle and do the I cord strap for that. It really shouldn't take me long. I really should leave this out. But if you guys want to take a look at the yarn, it's beautiful. Again, this is Enchantress from Sleepy Fox Yarns. I'm not sure if she has this colorway anymore, but the moment that I saw it, I knew I needed to have it because it's just beautiful. So next, um, actually the bucket that I'm pulling from is this bucket. I've showed you guys, that, guys this before, um, but this is kind of where my projects have been staying in my closet and not getting any, uh, not getting any play. Uh, the next project I guess I will show you is living in my Sandy by the Lakeside uh, project bag. I do have the um, the zipper part folded down to kind of have it as a bucket bag. But what's living in here is the Everyday Slouchy Beanie by Tristan Molina from Dragon Horde Yarns. And a little fun fact for you all, my maiden name is actually Molina. 
And just a quick little funny story, back in my school days, whether it was elementary, middle, or high school, didn't matter, my teachers loved to call me Christina Molina. Whenever they needed to call me, it was both first and last name, Christina Molina, Christina Molina, Christina Molina. And they refused, no matter how many times I told them, can you please just call me Christina? <laughs> they refused because they just loved how it flowed. They said that, that my name just flowed and it rhymed. I already knew that. I didn't need to be reminded of that. Every single time my name was called, um, but yeah, so <laughs> just a little fun fact. This is the Everyday Slouchy Meet Me by Tristan Molina. And I have been working on this. This is one of those projects that it just seems like it just doesn't end. Like you're working on it forever and it just does not end. That's actually what I've been feeling with this. And this actually is my first time using mohair. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, so uh, the mohair that I'm using for this, you can see, see, you can see it so much better. When I tried to show it last night, it was just so, so yellow. Um, but you can see it has little flecks of green in there, cream, really, really light um, uh, purple tint. It's just, it's just beautiful. Forgive me, I lost the tag for this. I do not remember... Um, the name or brand of this yarn or this mohair. I had got that when I visited Chelsea Lux Yarn in Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, I would say a year ago or yeah, I would say a year ago. Um, I had gotten that there. She had like a little a clearance side. So I had picked that one up. And this, this yarn is a mess. It has been through, <laughs> through me. Um, frogging and all of that so the cake is a little wonky I'm sorry but this is a lofty loops yarn I love lofty loops yarn I don't know if you can tell but I I, I do love her yarn um this was a 2019 April or May mystery um mystery sock club uh yarn I believe or just a mystery a mystery yarn club um and this was the April or May edition I don't believe it had a name but it could have I don't have the tag anymore but that I have been pairing with the mohair and it's just been looking beautiful you see now that I'm actually looking at my projects like now I want to pick them up and <laughs> just work on them like this one now I'm really wanting to work on this one because this one's so easy this is like the mindless of the mindless but it just feels like it takes forever to grow or to to see the progress on it um oh and for this I am using uh chow goo uh red lace um I believe this is the 16 inch actually uh the round and round round and round cow I said 16 inch but I think that one is 24 inches actually this one's 16 inch um, and this is 3.25 and I think I am off a needle size from the original pattern as well but it's looking really really nice I did the brim here I don't know if you can tell it was my first time doing a brim like that too and I made it just <laughs> I had to tweak it like it, it was it was a little difficult for me to do but um I have this like bump here I don't know if you can tell yeah, you can tell that little bump that I'm scared. Like when I do use it, it's going to give me like that rim line. But hey, I'm this far already. I'm just going to keep chipping away at it. So that's living in that bag. And the only other project that I have to show you um, would be a crochet project. But it's literally like this long. And it's just half double crochets in a really, really dark gray, almost black um colorway what i'm using for that or what i'm making for that i saw a pattern on pinterest that was kind of like a halter a halter tank top with a really pretty like eyelet design over here by the neck um that one is super mindless as well but i just haven't been i haven't even picked that up probably in like five months but again it's just a strip like this of half double crochet um 
And I'm using for that yarn, uh, Lion Brand Pounds of Love in the colorway charcoal. Um, but that's all the way deep down in there. I'm, I'm just not going to pull that out because like I said, it's just half double crochet. It's nothing too, nothing too fancy. But those are the projects that I've been trying to work on. Um, again, in this little bucket I showed you, I haven't worked on these in, I would say, two to three months. Um, this, uh, my round and round cowl and my sock, I pick that up every couple weeks or so. Um, but yeah, that's everything that I have been working on, you guys. Again, I'm sorry that I, I don't have anything. Um, you know what? I do have a finished project. I finished a pair of socks. Um, they're actual, darn, they're in the laundry, but I had knitted them just a little bit too big for myself. Um, so they're, they're a little bit loose by the toe, but I will still use them for home, you know, like when I have lotion on my feet or, or whatever. I did knit them a little bit long, but they were my first pair of shorty socks and I was using, um, Adel uh, Adelaide Cottage Yarns, um, I was using her colorway in Galaxy. Darn, I wish, I wish, I wish I would have taken them. Oh, I didn't even remember. You see, that's how long it's been. I didn't even remember that I finished those socks. But if I can, I will insert a picture of the finished socks here. Um, but yes, so now for the chatter segment. You guys, I am going through a little bit of a transition. Um, along with the peaks and valleys that I have been going through, along with the trials and tribulations, along with just kind of finding myself and creative outlets and just kind of finding myself in my creative intellect, I guess you can say. Um, I have been gravitating towards wanting a new creative outlet, something that's totally different that I never thought, number one, that I would be into, and number two, never thought that I would be able to express my creativity in that way. But the more and more that I have been doing research on this uh, creative outlet, um, more and more of watching videos on people doing this, more and more on the decorative process um, is what's intriguing me the most and really sparking a fire under my butt um, to go ahead and get started and to really just try something new, dive into something new, but really kind of have a focus and a niche in that area. And what I'm talking about is soap making <laughs> who doesn't love soap who doesn't love beautiful bars of soap and who doesn't love to just smell good i know for me um and also my mother whenever we go to festivals or um we go to a place called smithville which is more south jersey they have it's like a little area that's a bunch of little boutique stores they have a soap store and those are the stores that I always gravitate to go into first. I love seeing the body scrubs they have, the bars of soap especially, um, the lotions, and just handmade beauty um, toiletry products. And I have just been looking really into the decorative process that goes into these soaps and I really want to dive down that rabbit hole, but a rabbit hole that I'm going to make a nice little cozy home in and really kind of flourish in that area. So that is the transition that's going to be happening to my channel, uh, to me, to my Instagram, um, just to kind of switch it on over and transition into soap making but along with that I would love to take you guys on the ride with me I want to record and be on here frequent frequently with little vlog type videos at first I'm just showing you me kind of diving into the soap making um, I am a person that I love to dive in head first into what I want to do but with this particular um, this particular uh, niche I guess or this particular um, endeavor I want to start really from the bottom 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 and learn my way to the top 
learned my way to the top in experience, I guess I should, I should say. Um, there's a lot that goes into the soap making, a lot of learning about the percentages of the oils you're going to be using or the soap bases or, um, you know, the decorative process of it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that just need to go into the research aspect behind it and a lot of trial and error. And I want to bring you guys with me. I want to vlog the times that I am kind of making soap or I'm dibbling and trying to try new things. Just overall wanting to take you guys on the journey with me. Um, this is going to be something that I know I'm going to enjoy. I know that I'm going to flourish in this area and I just can't wait uh, to share this chapter with you guys. This next chapter of my life, a next chapter in my creativity, a next chapter just in my overall confidence. Um, but with that being said, I do have a, a small little haul to share with you of just a few things that I got to get started into the soap making. Now, my area of where I'm gravitating more in the soap making is the cold process soap making. Um, with that comes a lot of the decorating of the soap bars, a lot of um, the creativity, a lot of the building from scratch is the cold process way of making the soap. Um, the be very beginner friendly is the melt and pour. So I want to just kind of start there and get my toes wet, get my feet wet. And then from there, kind of um, work my way into getting all the materials that I need to do the cold process soap making. So what I'm going to show you right now can go into the cold process, but it's more so right now to kind of dip my toes into the melt and pour aspect of the beginner friendly aspect of soap making. So just a small little haul I want to share with you guys. Um, is living in this bag. This is the bag that you have been hearing crinkle a little bit throughout the video. My feet have been touching it. Um, but yeah, so let's get into that. So first I want to show you, if you see little water droplets on these, by the way, it's because I already like washed everything that I got, but I got soap molds. This is probably like the funnest thing to pick out is like different molds that you can use. So I got this one here that has, I believe like a, hibis a hibiscus, I'm probably butchering that type of flower, um, but a monstera, the flamingos. Um, that's what gravitated me the most towards this. I love flamingos. Flamingos are my favorite animal. Um, but I got this for little like tiny soaps, little embellishments that I can put inside of soaps just a cute little mold and just so you can see the love I have for flamingos I have my little flamingo friend there hanging out on my bookshelf and I actually have one by um my sewing table where my fabrics are so that is this mold and I also got this one how pretty right and the thing with melt and pour versus the cold pressed uh, soap making, the melt and pour is usually done within a couple hours time. You can literally use it within a couple hours, but the cold process soap, once you finish with your mold and your decorating, you have to wait at least 24 to 48 hours before you can cut the bar. And then after you cut the bar, excuse me, after you cut the bar, uh, you have to wait about four to six weeks for it to cure, for it to harden. Um, with the melt and pour soap, there is a process called suponification that is has already been done in the soap base that you're buying to do the melt and pour. Um, that's why it's very beginner friendly. You're not working with lye, you're not working with the oils, um, but the cold processed uh, way of making the soap, you're doing it from scratch. So you are using the lye, you are using the um, the different oils and the fragrances and things like that. And that process in order for it to stay hardened um, when you're going to use the soap, so you're not using it, putting it under water and it'd be just a mushy, a mushy um, mess. The fact that it stays hard is because it cured and it had the time to go through the suponification process for that. But I will take you into the knowledge that I have been gaining at a different time. I just want to show you what I got so far. Um, so I went to Michael's and I went to the dollar store. So what I'm showing you is what I got from Michael's first. 
So I got those soap molds. I had taken everything out of the boxes already, but I got some different colorants and I got a couple of different fragrances in here as well. I have a cucumber melon fragrance and I have a vanilla pomegranate fra uh, fragrance and just different colorants to put into the soap. Um, for the melt and pour soap, it is a like liquid colorant that you can put into it. For the cold process soap, you're using um, mica powder um, for the uh, colorant of the soap. So these are completely soap friendly. It's um, advertised as a colorant that you can use in soap. So it is okay for your skin. And the other thing that I got was a soap base. So I got this olive oil glycerin soap and because it is glycerin, it is a clear base that I am working with with this. It's not a shea butter base, which would be a white base or um, uh, I believe a co uh, cocoa butter base is a whiter base. This is clear, so we can make some pretty botanical looking soaps. And also to incorporate into my soaps, I have a little um, garden outside of this window. I have a balcony right here that I've been growing um, some herbs and some plants and stuff. Um, I want to definitely incorporate that into my products. But soap base. You can't do a melt and pour without some soap base. And this is the soap base that has already gone through the saponification process. So it has the lye in it already. It has the oils mixed. It has the fragrance. Everything that you need in a soap base is already here. Um, the cold process, you're making that soap base. So I got that. Okay, so that's everything that I got from Michael's. Um, I want to show you what I got from the dollar store, which is just really utensils for the soap making process. Um, so I got three clear um, thousand milliliter uh, pouring cups. These were recommend, all this stuff is recommended just to kind of grab from the dollar store, the utensils. You don't have to go crazy getting super expensive utensils. And I just got a um, bigger mixing bowl. I got these really, really cute uh, whisks. How adorable, right? I got these small ones in case I want, kind of want to separate the soap base and do different colors um, to pour. And I just got one main big one. So a few whisks. I went to the Dollar Tree for these items. I got a sifter, which um, coming to think of it, I should have gotten the tea sifter. Um, that one is the one that like kind of clamps clothes or the, the tea strainer. I think it's a tea strainer. That's what I should have gotten instead. But this one will do in a pinch. Sorry. I also got silicone um, spatulas. Just two red, one white, nothing special. And I got a little cutter, which this is more for the cold process soap making, but I just wanted to get one now so I can just kind of get the hang of, I guess, cutting it and whatever. Just practice. Practice makes perfect. So I just got a little cutter to cut the soap. And I actually just got a little loaf pan. And just to kind of start off, I want to invest in the ones that I can find from Amazon, which is actually kind of like a wooden box. And inside of the box is a silicone loaf mold. Um, and that's really used for the cold process soap making. Um, but you can also use it for a melt and pour. So I do want to invest in those, but I just grabbed this because I was grabbing everything and um, just figured maybe I can make a loaf out of this as well. And my crinkle bag. <laughs> this is also from the dollar store, but it's super cute. Love it. That's just kind of where I've been keeping all of my soap making supplies. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is everything. Um, again, I am ex so excited about this journey and I definitely want to take you guys along the ride. I want to just give you more insight on my life. Um, excuse me, I'm full of burps this morning. How rude. <laughs> 
but um, I want to just give you a more inside look in my life. I want to um, introduce you guys to my mother as well because she's going to be very much a part of this soap making process with me. I'm hoping, hi mommy if you're watching this, but I am hoping that um, it's something that um, she would like to dive into with me as well. Again, she loves all types of soap products, bath products, um, and it's something we always gravitate towards whenever we go to a festival or, or things like that. Um, so this is going to be something that's fun to do with her. And hopefully, you know, it can come into making a small business in the future. And that is why I want to take you guys um, every step of the way with me. Um, so I want to thank you guys for your support. If you have stuck with me um, through this very long hiatus that I have been on, thank you so much for your support and staying with me. Um, I hope the transition to my channel isn't something that makes you not want to follow me. If the, if that is the case, that is okay. I understand um, you first um, subscribed to me and wanted to follow me because of the knitting and the crochet. And I am, I'm not fully stopping that. I will be showing as little check-ins, little podcasts here and there for what I've completed or what I've been working on. That is very much still always going to be a part of my life. But like I said, I just kind of want a creative outlet that is my niche. And I really feel like this uh, soap making will be my niche. Um, but yes, thank you so much for your support, guys. Every time that I have posted or um, just even little check-ins from people that have been following me, asking how I'm doing, I thank you guys so much. Um, it's really, really cool knowing that I have people that are creative-minded like me who um, just support each other and want to engage with each other and I thank you guys so much. But enough of me rambling. I am going to try to make a little vlog style of me um, doing a melt and pour now. Um, so hopefully let's see how that comes out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Um, it was wonderful chatting with you and until next time, bye. <laughs>
so I got the big tub. I figured I'm gonna be doing the melt and pour for a while, just you know, until I kind of perfect this, and then I'll go over to the cold process soap making. But I will just kind of put this video maybe in a faster speed, so you can just kind of see me in the kitchen and see me working and doing what I do. <laughs> melting my soap in the microwave I did it for about two minutes but I checked it every 10 seconds and um, mixed it every 10 seconds so now it's very fluid it's where I need it to be now here comes the fun part in adding the oils and I mean the fragrances and the colorants Okay, so I went ahead and I poured my molds and this is how they're looking. So pretty. I did these two with lavender and oatmeal into it and these I just did plain and I did my little flamingos. I a little over poured a little bit over here but these soaps should be ready to check in a couple of hours. Um, I, 
lost my track of thought. Oh, I only have um, this hand sanitizer spray. It's recommended that you use 99% alcohol to remove any of the little bubbles that lay at the top, but I don't have alcohol handy. That has been kind of hard to find. Um, and when I do see it, I like never pick it up and it's horrible, I know. But um, yeah, I'll check in with you guys in a couple hours. Hey guys, so here is the finished product after I popped them out of the mold. You can see this has a really cute swirl at the bottom. Um, I used the oatmeal and lavender for both of these two, but you can see I was a little heavy handed there with the oatmeal and it I did get some um, bubbles going on. I have to research more as to why that does happen and how to prevent it. You can see the lavender at the bottom of this one, but a bunch of, um, bubbles there that's what do you need the alcohol for actually is to eliminate those kind of bubbles so i'm sure because i didn't have the 99 percent alcohol um it did cause the bubbles at the edge but otherwise the other ones came out so pretty this is the one that i just did purple again hideous bubbles but when i get um alcohol it will work out just fine and look how cute Look at these little flamingos, so adorable. I'm so excited about this, guys. Overall, for my first batch, it was good.